Hi, and welcome. I'm Carrie Kennedy, and this is David Meeker. Hi. We both have a shared interest and a passion for a really special place in Niagara. It's 12 Mile Creek. We both work to support the Niagara chapter of Trout Unlimited Canada. It's a charity that was founded by volunteers who've been working to conserve and protect this really special cold water stream. You might know 12 Mile Creek as a raging torrent that powers through St. Catharines and enters Lake Ontario at Port Dalhousie. But it begins up in the headwaters, high in the slopes around Font Hill and Thorold. It begins as small tributaries and little trickles that come together to make the stream. It's this upper 12 Mile Creek that we're most interested in because of the unique land and soils here and the unique habitat that they provide. Upper 12 Mile Creek is home to many different species, including brook trout, which happens to be a species at risk. Brook trout used to be quite abundant in this area, but over time, their populations have dwindled. Brookies have had a hard time surviving because they need cold, clean, and clear water to grow and develop. The water within 12 Mile Creek is not always as cold, clean, or clear as they need it to be, which is particularly troublesome because it happens to be the only river in which they are found in the entire Niagara region. Brookies make for a wonderful indicator of the overall health of a stream system. If brookies were able to thrive in this area once again, it would tell us that there is a happy and healthy ecosystem that is ready and waiting for all sorts of species, including humans, and that's the way we want it to be. We really do want to help and bring back the brook trout. To do this, we want to help people to understand what's happening in the creek to water quality and to habitat, and to encourage them to help out and find ways to improve the conditions here. At our fall planting events, we like to have fun. And one thing we do is to kick them off with a Frisbee game to help learn about brook trout life cycles. David and I would like to share this game with you. Are you ready, David? Okay, catch. I caught a couple of mature brook trout ready to spawn. In the fall, it's the drop in water temperature that triggers reproduction. The brook trout will swim upstream to the headwaters where the females will dig a hole in the gravelly bottom to lay their eggs. Then the male brook trout that are swimming nearby will fertilize those eggs. However, if the water is not cold enough, the females might not lay any eggs at all that year. What does happen to those eggs that do get laid? Well, let's find out. Those eggs, they stay at the bottom of the creek all winter long. They're very fragile at this stage and easily damaged. They need to absorb oxygen from the water in order to develop. The water that's really turbulent and bubbly and flowing over rocks, it holds a lot of oxygen. And also water that's cold holds more oxygen than warm water. So it's fine all through the winter, but in the spring, if the creek warms up too soon, those eggs may not hatch or their hatching might be delayed. Let's find out what happens next. Once hatched, the newly born fish called alevins will survive by hiding in between rocks that are within the stream bed. This little yolk sac on their belly, that provides them with all the food that they need for this stage of life. If the water is too warm, however, their growth may be stunted. Now, what happens when that yolk sac is all used up? Those young fish called fry are able to eat on their own now and they look for plankton and small aquatic insects, little critters and bugs that start their life in the stream too. These young brook trout, they need clear water so that they can see their prey and catch it. As they grow, they develop khaki colored squiggly markings on their backs and that helps them to camouflage with their surroundings to avoid being prey themselves. Let's see what happens as they continue to grow. Heads up. In the two years it takes for brook trout to fully mature, they prefer to stay in water that is lower than 18 degrees Celsius. If it's any warmer than that, they might get stressed out. Or if the water remains above 23 degrees Celsius for an extended period of time, 
these guys might not survive. In order to beat the heat, these brook trout will seek out deep pools within the stream to retreat to. To thrive and live their best life, brook trout need good water quality. They need water that stays cool and is clear. Water that's not murky or carrying pollutants in it. The best ingredient for them and their water is groundwater. That's water that comes from rain or snowmelt and has absorbed into the ground. It slowly moves through the spaces between soil particles and the rocks underground. As it does, pollutants and sediment are left behind. And then it emerges as springs into the creek to supply that cool, clean and clear water that the brook trout need. The biggest impacts on 12 Mile Creek have been the loss of trees in the headwaters and urban development. In the areas surrounding Font Hill, Buildings, roofs, and roads prevent water from seeping into the earth and recharging groundwater supply. Now, that water that falls on those hard surfaces instead flows directly into the stream and can cause erosion, and it often carries pollutants and sediments with it as well. Just imagine the water that you see running off of the roads when it's raining outside. It's kind of like that. Not only do these high water events prevent groundwater from being recharged, but they can also damage brook trout spawning habitat. As the water travels down the slopes of Font Hill and Short Hills, it carries with it sediments like gravel and sand right into the stream, which can smother out the brook trout habitat. And it can also fill in the pools that they seek during the summertime months. So the way we can help brook trout and the environment is to slow down the flow of water. Naturally, Trees and plants are great at slowing the flow because rainwater catches onto the leaves as water droplets and there's time for it to then evaporate and return to the air. Or the water can flow along the branches and stems and channel down into the soil. Another tool that we could use are rain barrels. Rain barrels are great because they can store the water from a rainstorm and then later it can be drained away slowly into the garden. In our towns and cities, there are also some fantastic construction solutions and new innovations for low impact development that help water get into the ground close to where it falls. One way you can help brook trout is to tell their story and share it with others. Encourage your parents and your neighbors to help slow down the flow. We invite you to check out our website, bringbackthebrookies.ca where we've developed a video series to help curious students and teachers like you to learn more. Thank you so much for joining us today and for learning about brook trout and their precious habitat and how we can all help to support them.